Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam. Ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajmain. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna a'tayna qal qawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shani aqa huwa al-abdar. Rabbi shali sadri. Wa yassalli amri. Wahlul uqdatam lisani hafqaw kawli. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, today I'll be speaking on the topic, the 15 point action the Muslim Ummah should take when someone insults the Prophet or indulges in Islamic blasphemy. This is a very short speech of mine. For the longer version, you can refer to my full length on the same topic. I'll be only speaking on the highlights of these 15 points where action should be taken. Each point can be elaborated to more than one hour or one speech. Each point you can give a speech on that. And depending upon how serious is the insult or the blasphemy, maybe you may have to implement only the first three points or sometimes only five points, sometimes seven points, sometimes eight points. Depending upon the seriousness of the insult, you have to decide how many points should we indulge in. A beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number one, hadith number 177. A beloved Prophet said that whenever you see an evil action, you should stop it or change it with your hand by doing an action. If you cannot, then do it with your tongue, that is by speaking. If you cannot, then by your heart, that is hating that act in your heart and condemning it is wrong then you will be the lowest level of a believer. You will have the lowest level of Iman. Based on this hadith, inshallah, we will discuss the 15 point action plan if someone insults the Prophet or if someone indulges in Islamic blasphemy. The first thing that any Muslim should do whenever he hears any insult against the Prophet or sees anything against the Prophet or against Islam is he should condemn that act in his heart immediately. He should agree what is being done is wrong and he should condemn it. Unfortunately today, we have many Muslims who have been so much impressed by the Western world and the philosophy that when they see someone insulting the Prophet, they may say, oh, this is freedom of speech, no problem and we should not take any action. The first a Muslim can do the least is condemn in his heart. Then only can he take the further actions. Number two, today the whole world has become a global village and today one of the best and the easiest ways to make anything public or to convey your message to the masses or to the world is the social media. Today 4.14 billion people use social media. 53% of the world, they use social media. And the most popular and famous among the, all the social media is the Facebook. As of October 2020, Facebook has got 2.701 billion monthly active users. The second most famous social media, it is the YouTube, which has got 2 billion monthly active users. Third is the WhatsApp, which again has got 2 billion monthly active users. The fourth, it is the Facebook Messenger, which has got 1.3 billion. The fifth is the WeChat, which has got 1.206 billion monthly active users. And the sixth, it is the Instagram, which has got 1.156 billion users as of 2020. And the list goes on. Amongst the top 20 social media platforms that are there. We have also the Snapchat, which has got 433 million monthly active users. We have the Pinterest, which has 413 million monthly active users. We have the Twitter, which comes on the 18th in the list, has got 333 million monthly active users as of October 2020. We have to use as much as possible of the social media to convey our condemnation against the evil that has been done. 
We have to condemn if anyone insulted the Prophet or anyone had an Islamic blasphemy on the social media. For example, my social media, the Facebook, has got 22.6 million followers. It is the largest amongst any Malaysian resident, whether he be a Malaysian citizen or a Malaysian PR holder. There is no Malaysian PR holder or a citizen, a Malaysian resident, which even has half the followers, Alhamdulillah, what I have on my Facebook. We did a campaign on the Facebook for five days only on posts and we put 16 posts. Then we had some videos which went on for another few days. In this one week, Alhamdulillah, the total number of people who viewed our posts and videos was somewhere close to 45 to 50 million. Alhamdulillah. We also did on the YouTube. On the YouTube, mashallah, there are 2.2 million subscribers. And one video I posted against what Macron said about Islam. And in a span of three days, more than half a million people saw it. So depending upon whichever social media platform you have, irrespective whether the numbers are small or big, you have to put it onto the social media platform and make it reach as many people as you can. If you cannot say something yourself, if you cannot write something yourself, what you should do? You should go to the social media platforms of other Islamic speakers. They can be other Islamic scholars or other Muslim leaders and see what they have said. After maybe watching 25, 30, 40, 50 of them, you can select the best that you wanted the best that you feel and you can forward it onto your social media platform or to your friends, to your non-Muslim friends, to your Muslim friends. And this is the least you can do. And believe me, it is absolutely free. What you can do, you can go online. There are many articles available on our beloved Prophet Muhammad written even by non-Muslims, by Muslims. We have a small booklet written on the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, by a Hindu, Prophet Ramakrishna Rao. We have articles written by Lee Martin, by Thomas Carlyle, by Michael H. Hart. Pick this up and forward it. There's a very good thera which is called the Sealed Nectar by Sheikh Safiur Rahman Mubarak Puri. And it won an award. You can take it in the PDF, forward it to your non-Muslim friend, to your Muslims. Very easy. You can go on the website and pick up a good translation in the language you feel is the best, whether it be English, whether it be Malay whether it be Hindi, whether it be Urdu, pick up the translation, forward it to a non-Muslim friend. Very easy. It doesn't cost you anything, not even a penny. This is the least a Muslim can do after condemning the act in his heart. Number three, he can distribute pamphlets dealing with the life of the Prophet or small booklets or he can distribute copies of the Quran, copies of the translation of the Quran. He can take it up for Muslim organization. He can buy it from the bookstore. Point number four, is that he should see in his list of contacts that who are the most influential people that he knows who are the top 10 or top 25 or top 50 opinion makers in his contacts and depending upon each one's capacity he may know maybe the prime minister he may know the home minister the religious minister he may know a local politician he may know a celebrity Least he can know is if he's staying in an apartment, he may know the chairman of the society. Whoever you know, make a list of the 10 most influential people in your contacts or 25 influential people or 50 and convey to them the message personally, either on phone or on a personal text message that see, this is what has happened. So and so person has insulted the prophet. We have to take action. What happens when many people tell those who are opinion maker, if one person tells to them, they may not be bothered. But when many people write to them, those who he knows, he gets into action. And this is very important. Point number five is that there can be big billboards put in important cities on the main crossroad where you find a lot of traffic. You can have the billboard for a month and sayings of the beloved Prophet. What other non-Muslims have praised the Prophet? You can write verses of the Quran where Allah says in the Quran in Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, that verily the Prophet standeth on the highest standard of character. A similar message is given in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 21, that verily in the Prophet you will find a beautiful pattern of conduct. These verses, let the people read. 
when they are going by, when they are passing by, you can put similar posters or hoardings on the bus, on the cars, on the taxis, so more people will watch it. Whatever way you can promote it, you can propagate, you can have street plays, street plays, enacting plays, and you can have plays condemning what people have done against Islam. See to it that in schools, you let your children enact this place and give short speeches on the life of the Prophet. The sixth is that you can protest against the evil action. You can protest if someone has insulted the Prophet. And depending upon how serious the matter is, sometimes you should take action only on the first three points, sometimes four points, depending upon the seriousness of the insult or derogatory remark against Islam, you may only indulge in the first five points or seven points or eight points or maybe all 15 points. The sixth point is there should be a protest, there should be a mass gathering. So people get together and they condemn this evil action. They condemn the insult to a prophet or any derogatory remark against Islam. And larger the gathering, the bigger is the impact. And like we had a few days back, maybe 50,000 people that gathered in Bangladesh against the wrong statement made by the President of France, Macron. We had a couple of years back in Chechnya where more than a million people gathered just to condemn against the insult made against the Prophet. So larger the gathering, the better is the impact. And when these gatherings take place, you can give a letter to the embassy or the consulate of that country. Like in this case, it was the president of France who spoke against the Prophet, who spoke against Islam, who had sketches put on the buildings of France. So we can call the French embassy or give a letter to the French embassy or the French consul telling we condemn the actions and the sayings of your president, of your country, President Macron. The seventh point is that we should boycott the products. If the country which is condoning the insults or if the government of that country accepts that these insults are correct and should be against the profit, what we should do? We should ban the products of that country. And we had done that in 2006 when the Danish cartoons were there and Danish country went in a loss of more than $2 billion. Now we have to ban the French products or the services provided by France. And in the 16 posts, my five posts were only dedicated to banning the French products. And mashallah, the first four posts, in a span of three days, it had 22 million views, with each post on average five and a half million. One post went up to seven million, alhamdulillah. So whichever way we can, we should boycott these products of that particular country. Point number eight is that we should contribute financially whatever we can for this cause. If you're a rich man, give a big amount. If you're a poor man, you can give $10, give $5. Allah will see the percentage you give, not the amount you give. If a person who is a millionaire and has the capacity to donate $10 million and he donates only $1 million, a poor man has the capacity of donating only $10 and he gives $20, but naturally the person who gives $20 and is poor will get multiple times more sawab than a rich millionaire who only donates $1 million. Allah will see on your capacity. So don't think what will I donate, what will happen with my $5 or with my $10, my social media account has only 100 people or only 500 people, oh he has got million. Whatever capacity you have, Allah will judge you according to your capacity and according to your striving. So we should give for this cause to organizations so that all these things can be done. The ninth point is that we should make this condemnation public in the mainstream media, whether it be on the satellite channel, the television satellite channels, the news stations, it can be on the radio broadcast stations, it can be in the daily newspapers, it can be in the weekly newspapers, it can be in the magazines. If you own any of the mainstream media, whether a satellite channel, see to it that run a campaign for maybe a week or on your newspaper, or on your magazine, or you know someone who owns the newspaper, or you know someone who is in a high position 
in this newspaper or a satellite channel and ask him to run this campaign and surely it will benefit a lot. More people in the world will come to know about it. Tenth point is that there should be legal action taken against this insult, against this blasphemy. There should be a battery of Muslim lawyers who are dedicated for this cause. And whenever such things take place, what they should do, they should immediately file a case in the court of law, maybe of that country where this act has taken place, or maybe in the international court of law. And try and see to it that this thing is stopped and this insult is completely stopped. Now, up to the first eight points, it is meant for any common person. Any common man can surely follow the first eight points, whatever to his capacity. 9th and 10th, everyone cannot do depending upon each one's capacity. The 11th point is for the politicians. The countries where Muslims are living in majority, they should call the ambassador of that country which has condoned this act or where the act has taken place. And see to it that it is told to him, the ambassador of that country, like what happened now, mashallah, we have countries like Turkey, like Pakistan, like Malaysia, they call the ambassador of France and told them, we disagree with what your president has said. We disagree with what President Macron has said against Islam and against a prophet. Or if you have to voice it out. You have to condemn that act. Twelfth is, if yet it persists, what we should do, we should have a trade embargo against that country. The Muslim countries should get together and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and has given us the good things which the world requires. And we know today that oil is a very important commodity, the petrol. And this is mainly in the Muslim countries. So if the Muslim countries, which are main exporters of petrol, for example, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Oman, Malaysia, they get together and they see to it that we will stop supplying petrol to this country. I know you may think there may be a financial loss. Allah is with you. Don't worry. The more you support the cause of Allah, Allah will support you. And if we put a trade embargo, surely they will think 10 times before speaking against the Prophet. Number 13 is, if it is very high, if the insult against Islam is very high, we have to cut all diplomatic relations with that country. And this was done a few decades earlier by the Muslim countries against Israel. When Israel did atrocities and killing against the Palestinians and operations, the Arab countries and the Muslim countries got together and we cut all diplomatic relationships with them. One or two countries started many years back and unfortunately now, in the last couple of months, some of the countries had again become friendly and opened the consulate. This is completely disunity. We Muslims should be united. How can a country which is killing our Muslim brothers and sisters, which is against Islam, how can you again develop friendly relationship with them? The 14th is that there should be specialized organizations which are mainly meant for this cause, which are mainly meant to reply to insults against the Prophet, reply to attacks against Islam. If someone is attacking a Muslim die, these organizations should be full-time dedicated for this cause. The other organization, like for example, we are the organization. We have dedicated maybe one or two weeks for this cause against the protest, etc. But imagine a full year we are only doing protest. Who will do the dawah? Sometimes what happens, all the Muslim organizations leave everything and they jump into the thing. Yes, that can be for a few days, one or two days, can be for a week, can be for two weeks, can be for a month, but not always. So when we have full-time dedicated organizations only for this cause, which have got full-time cyber troopers, which are involving in the social media, checking who is attacking Islam and replying to them, if it's just a small level attack, or having a battery of small lawyers, maybe four or five lawyers in each organization. If such organizations are there in every Muslim country or in most of the major cities which are controlled by Muslims, and if anyone does any action against, immediately they get into action. And in such greater cause like what happened about the Danish cartoons or what the French president said, they can continuously follow up for the full year. And the others, they can go back to the activity so that there is no loss for Islam. So these organizations fully dedicated for replying to attacks against Islam. And point number 15 and the last point is that the Muslim countries should unite together. 
and this unity should solely be for the cause of Islam. We should forget our political differences, unite together as one block. And if anyone attacks Islam, we are together. If they attack the Prophet, we are together. If they attack the Quran, we are together. If they attack Allah, we are together. Not that, oh, how can I say something in this country because there's so much of export and import going on. If you strive for the cause of Allah, Allah will take care of all your problems. Now what we find, many Muslim countries are afraid to speak against countries which are speaking against Islam because they are afraid that they will lose business if the Muslims are united. And if all the Muslim countries, today there are 57 Muslim countries in which Muslims are in majority. If all don't want to at least start with 5-6 countries, tomorrow it will be 7, tomorrow it will be 8, 10, it will increase. And this unity should only be for the cause of Islam, for the cause of Allah and His Rasul. And if this is done, if Muslims are united, no one will ever be able to point a finger at us. And I would like to give you an example to prove this. If you have heard of Sultan Abdul Hamid II, he was the last active caliph of the Ottoman Empire which had power. He was the third last but the other two were very weak. He was the last one which actually had some power. And in his reign, in 1880s or 1890s, in France, they were going to conduct a comedy play against the Prophet. And when Sultan Abdul Hamid II heard about it, he got very angry and wrote a letter to the French government saying that I have heard that there is a play going to take place and I want that this play should not take place and it should be banned. Initially, France tried to sway away from it, but when they came to know that Sultan was serious, they immediately banned that play and to please the Sultan, the people who were going to enact the play and the comedy, they sent them on exile to UK. Imagine, though the Ottoman Empire was towards its lower side in strength, yet the Muslims were united. Later on, the Sultan comes to know that the same play is going to be enacted now in UK. The Sultan gets angry and he writes a similar letter to the UK government, saying that this play was supposed to be enacted earlier in France and I wrote a letter and they stopped it, they banned it, even you banned it. So they get a reply from the UK government saying that UK is not France and we believe in freedom of expression. Sultan Abdul Hamid II got very angry. He wrote a stronger letter saying that if you do not ban this comedy, I will inform the full Muslim world about this and what you are doing against a prophet of Islam. And if anything happens after that, you will be responsible for the consequences. The UK government was so scared that they immediately banned that comedy. Imagine at that time, France was so powerful, UK was so powerful, but the Muslims were united. Because the Muslims were united, they did not want to cross swords with the Muslims. Because we had the Caliphate. And at that time, though it was towards the last part of the Ottoman Empire, even though UK and England had so many colonies, they were ruling so many parts of the world, yet they were afraid of Sultan because of the unity of the Muslims. And do you know at that time, Muslims were much smaller in number than what we are. Maybe they were less than 15% of the world population. Today, the Muslims are more than 25% of the world population. Today, the Muslims are more than 2 billion. Don't listen to the statistics of those people who are not aware of. Today, according to authentic statistics, in 2020 October, there are more than 2 billion Muslims. More than 25% of the world population are Muslims. Imagine if we are united, what would have happened? At that time, when we were a smaller number, we were a smaller percentage. At that time, the non-Muslims were afraid. If the Muslims unite, no non-Muslim today will ever have the guts to insult the Prophet, to insult Islam. The problem is that we are disunited. If we unite, we will never face the problem that we are facing today. And believe me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require us. I believe these incidences are taking place. Allah is allowing it to take place to test the Muslims. That who is really striving to support the Prophet? He's only testing us. For Allah to take care of this is very easy. Easily can take care of all this. He is allowing these things to happen to see how are the Muslims reacting. To test this person as a Muslim name, but actually he's a Munafik. Allah is doing just to test. 
we as Muslims should see how much do we strive in the cause of Allah. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that anyone is not a believer until he loves me more than his father, more than his children, more than whole of mankind. It's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, hadith number 15. Hadith number 16 says that a person will taste the sweetness of belief if he has three things. If he loves Allah and his Rasul more than anything else in this world. Number two is that if he loves someone for the sake of Allah and that person loves him for the sake of Allah. And number three, he would never like to go back to disbelief, to kufr, like you never like to go into the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah is sufficient. Allah clearly says in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 61, that anyone who abuses the messenger of Allah will have a painful punishment. Allah doesn't require us. Allah gave the similar message in Surah Azab chapter number 33 verse number 57, that indeed anyone who abuses Allah and his messenger, Allah will curse him in this world and the hereafter and will prepare for him a humiliating punishment. Allah doesn't require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah can take care and protect his messenger. And I started my talk by quoting the verse of the Quran from Surah al qawsar where Allah says in chapter number 108, verse number 1 to 3, Inna shani that we have granted thee the fount of abundance. Allah, the Lord of mankind, has given the fount of abundance. In Jannah, the river and fountain of abundance called al qawsar is given to the Prophet. Who are we? If Allah is praising him, the full humankind is again the Prophet, doesn't matter at all. Allah says, turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And anyone who hated thee, hates Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he will be cut off from all future hope. Allah doesn't require you and me the rubbish that we are. And Allah promises in the Quran. I would like to end this talk with the verse of the Quran which is mentioned three times in the glorious Quran. In Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 33. In Surah Fatah chapter number 48 verse number 28. And Surah Saf chapter number 61 verse number 9. Allah says, Huwa allazi arsala rasulhu bil huda wa din al haq liyuz hira wa al din kulli That Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions over all the other isms whether it be Christianism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Atheism, Modernism, Socialism Islam is destined to supersede all Kulle master them all Walaqaliyan mushrikoon however much the unbelievers don't like it however much the mushrik don't like it and in one verse or two three he ends it by saying Waqafa billahi shayda and enough is Allah as a witness I like to end this that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us hidayah to follow the guidance given in the Quran and they say hadith and unite the Muslims as one, inshallah. Wa akhru dawana, alhamdulillah, bil alameen.